Hello, my name is Jessie. Uh, I'm an artist and I've been asking people on my Instagram at jessiejo underscore art whether or not they want a video on how I make my paintings and I got um, a lot of responses saying yes. So I'm gonna start making videos on my favorite paints, how I paint, um, my, my techniques, my favorite painting style, music that I listen to, just all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna just start making videos because those are my kind of my favorite videos to watch. I can watch people paint all day long. So I figure I'll make some too. I did want to say first though, that um, although I do have a degree in fine art, my bachelor's degree in fine art, I went to Otis College of Art Design. This is not gonna be step-by-step -step on how to make a hyper-realistic portrait painting or anything like that. It's not gonna be techniques on how to make the perfect painting. It's not gonna be techniques on, you know, <laughs> the right kind of paints to use and the right kind of linseed oil or this and that. Like, I, although I have my degree, my painting style is kind of free flowing. I kind of wing it, honestly, every time. I learned from a woman named Marianne Fisher when I was in middle school um, how to oil paint. I went to her painting classes on the weekends. So that's where I learned. That's where I got my first skills on how to oil paint. And I kind of carry those skills with me even now and I'm almost 30. Yeah. So if you're looking at this video and you're a professional portrait artist, you're going to be like, what's going on? This video isn't for you. This video is just to show how I paint, what I use, my favorite kind of techniques, my favorite skills. I mean, there are a lot of self-taught artists out there who are doing amazing work. And I'm not saying my work is amazing necessarily, but I love it and I never want to stop doing it. So I'm going to show you how I make it. Um, this is my journey and um, if you like what you see and you want to use some of the techniques that I show or some of the paints that you see on here or if you have any questions let me know. You can take what you want and leave what you don't. It doesn't matter to me. But yeah, I just wanted to first say that and then yeah, if you're here and you're following along, thanks so much. Okay. So I have, I have all my stuff. Um, so let's get this actually open. So this is my, like my paint saver, my wet paint saver. It's a, a Masterson. But to tell you the truth, I use so much linseed oil that I'm not sure any kind of paint saver is gonna work for me when I was um, in, or taking my oil painting classes on the weekends with Marianne. Uh, my first painting teacher, uh, we just covered it up with um, ow, with just like clean wrap on the top and then you peeled that one away and it it held it, but it definitely took some of your paint away. So you'd strip off a layer every time an oil paint is expensive. So it's a good one if you're using oil paint and you don't use a lot of linseed oil, you kind of apply the paint on thick. It'll hold the thicker blobs for sure, but any of the thinner areas doesn't really work. This um, little rolly car, it was actually, it's supposed to um, go in the, the garage. So you can wheel it around in the garage. Ultra HD, oh my God, I'm gonna say this wrong, Seville Classics. <laughs> Anybody who has like this brand and they use it for their garage, probably saying it wrong. But yeah, so this is my painting palette that I have in here all ready to go. And I mean, you can just easily Slip it out like this. So I think I'm gonna take this out actually and show you. Cool, so here's the painting palette that I use. This is what it looks like originally. Uh, so it's palette paints, paper, Strathmore is what I always get. And honestly, this is 40 sheets, it lasts me forever. So I think this is maybe, it might be like 20 bucks or something. So it's a little pricey, but it lasts. So I would I use palette paper or you can use, you know, in my dreams I use, I'm going to be using like a big glass palette and um, have a place to clean and I'll have a warehouse and I have all this stuff. But right now we are in my apartment and this is what we have and it's easy to put away into the Masterson and tuck away into here. Everything's neat and tidy and um yeah because i can't really keep everything out using acrylic palette i actually make acrylic palettes um so you can use something like this as well 
Uh, this is engraved with my one of my drawings, but um, so I do sell these. So if you wanted one, my Instagram is Jesse Joe underscore art J E S S I J O. Um, yeah, I can get you one of these if you want. So this is a, a palettes are another good one acrylic palettes. The only thing is that um, this one cleans off really well, but I just like how much space this one offers. And you can see both are awesome. I like how much space this one offers though. I get a lot of my supplies. I used to get a lot of my supplies when I lived in Los Angeles uh, from Blick Arts Materials. They have a lot of really good stuff and it's not, it won't break the bank. I mean, it depends on what you're using obviously, but um, that's usually where I go. Otherwise, right now in Bend where I live, we have Michael's and we have a tiny art supply store downtown called Blair Art Supply. And honestly, the, it's not really a ton of options. So it's a little limited. Uh, you can always order online. There's tons of places. This is just a brush cleaner kind of. I put, I usually put my um, turpentine in here or my turpenoid, my odorless turpenoid. I put this in here. This is to clean off your brushes in between different colors and things like that. So that way you can get rid of the oil paint and move on to the next thing. This is the odorless turpenoid that I use. You still want to keep windows open when you're working just because it can be dangerous even though it's odorless. Look at me saying stuff like I actually know what I'm talking about but it could be totally wrong. There's not going to be a lot of facts, sort of facts in these videos, <laughs> just so you know. So this is a trip that I use. You can get this anywhere, Michael's, Blick's, any art supply store should have them. Um, have it honestly and you can get a huge size you can get a smaller size I think they have ones that are maybe this big but uh, I go through a lot so and I like to just have it on hand so I usually like to get the bigger bottle this is one of my favorite things ever it's Bob Ross painter's glove so you shake it up really well and you put it on your hands and usually I put it on some of my, my arms too before you paint before you do anything honestly handling any oil paint could get on you any of the tubes or anything they usually have oil paint doesn't really dry that easily so there's usually some kind of some paint hanging out somewhere so this is really helpful and all you have to do is wash your hands at the end and it'll come off this is another awesome and I'll put all, a picture of all the things that I use this is Gamblin solvent free fluid this is awesome it kind of thins the oil paint a little bit, makes it easier to move around on the canvas. Uh, this stuff is awesome. I kind of use it sparingly though, because a little doesn't, it does go a long way, but it doesn't at the same time. It's kind of hard to explain. But um, this is awesome. My favorite thing though is linseed oil. And a little bottle like this will, will go a long way too. I've used it on maybe three paintings so far and I still have half of it left. Um, linseed oil thins your paint so this makes it so you can especially with some diff different oil paints from from different brands um, stretch differently <laughs> so they like some of them are super thick some of them don't really move that much on the canvas and it depends also on your brush too but um, this Windsor Newton linseed oil is my favorite I use it on every painting it um, makes it so that your paint dries quickly too and um, like say you're working on the edges or something and you need to ship out a painting, this is a good thing to use. Let's see. My favorite brush right now is this one here. It's a Princeton Art and Brush Co. And it's just a tiny, tiny little guy. I've had this probably five years or something, but it's just the perfect, it's a perfect dry bristles to move the paint around without blending. Um, I do really love blending brushes. I usually work in this size. And then the, the largest I go, so this is kind of like the biggest, well, this one I love for backgrounds. And it's not the best brush because it does the bristles and the hairs, it'll come off on the painting. So you have to be really careful and pull the paint, um, the bristles off of the painting, which kind of sucks. But it's a round mop. This one is um, Master's Touch Fine Art Studio. I think I got it from Michaels. So a lot of my stuff is like, I'm on a budget. I don't have a ton of money. So I'm usually buying things, 
you know, I can spend this much money at a time, maybe like $100 in the store, and it doesn't usually get you that far, but then you have them for a long time, so it's worth it. This is a good one, um, Grumbacher, Grumbacher, Grumbacher. I buy paintbrushes just by feeling them. <laughs> I really should make a list of the things that I use and why I use them, but here we are. I love an angled brush like this one here. Oh, it's awesome for those edges. Um, and then, yeah, so these are kind of the sizes that I go to. Let's get them in a nice order. These are like my favorite sizes, basically. This is what I mostly use for every painting are these brushes here. Um, paint brush um, cleaner, this huge tub here. You can get a much smaller one. I think it's maybe this big. But this guy is a guy I always get. It lasts me maybe a year. It lasts forever. Um, people who are painting uh, more often or have more time to paint probably go through this a bit quicker. But it's the, the Master's Brush Cleaner. You can get this at most art supply stores. They have a bunch of other products too that are awesome. They have some that'll help get um, paint off your clothes, get off your hands, all kinds of stuff. Um, so this is awesome. Um, let's move on to paint. So my favorite brand of paint has got to be Gamblin. They just, it's, they're a little bit more opaque. It depends on the color, but you can get different kinds of, I mean, some of them, like the Prussian blue is going to be a little bit more oily. Um, this one is the cadmium red light. This is going to be a bit more opaque, um, but they just, the colors are so vibrant or, and so deep. They're just good colors. So Gamblin for sure. I think each of these is maybe five or six dollars. So if you're looking to get a bunch of new colors, it's gonna be expensive, but um, it is worth it. Uh, Winter Newton is another good one, but I have to say Gamblin is my favorite. See, I have like the Blick, Blick paint here too. This is just like your basic crimson alizarin. So, you know, this is if you want to make a really deep black, you would use this sap green and blue, and you can make an awesome deep black. Um, I've had this one, this Windsor Newton Titanium White for maybe three years. So it lasts a long time. Titanium White is the one that you want to get, not the Zinc White. The Zinc White is a little bit transparent, but the Titanium White will hold and it mixes well. You don't need a lot of it. Um, I use this one a lot, probably every one of my paintings. Uh, another one, I gotta say, one of my favorites, and I use it everything, is Titanium Buff, especially the Gamblin. Titanium Buff, just, I mean, it's in, all in this area of this painting. Um, it's just amazing, and it's not white. So if you wanted to mix something, make it a little bit lighter, a little bit more opaque, but you don't want to use white, this is an awesome option. Um, this is another one of my favorite, olive green, another Gamblin. This one is amazing. And that's in this painting too. I just got this little paint carrier from Hobby Lobby. You can go to a thrift store and find something and support your local businesses. That's better. I'm trying to think of what else. You know, that's pretty much it. The next video is gonna be showing you, you know, step-by-step step kind of how I use those those items and apply it to an actual canvas. The canvas itself, I usually get something from Michaels. There's a lot of really good deals. Usually you can buy one, get one free, stuff like that. However, it's not the best quality canvas. If you're on a budget like me, it will work. I recommend getting the thicker bars. So this is the two inch. This is a two inch here. They just look nicer, they hold better, they're better quality, stronger, yeah. So I recommend getting the two inch, there's usually a like studio canvas option, those are better quality. Canvases run from, you know, 20 to $100, depending on the size you get. I usually work big, so shipping is always more expensive, the canvas is more expensive, but it's more fun that way. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'm gonna 
take a video of everything, like I said, of what I use. And yeah, you can buy some of the products if you want. Thank you. So thanks for watching the first video. Everything's at the end there and what I use if you want to start getting some things ready to purchase or if you already have some of the stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, I'm gonna do a video on how I get to something like this painting behind me just so you can see how I do it. Um, cool, thanks.